Hi, it's Jeff Redding from VidMag TV. We're sitting with Jim Jones, a member of Purubu, and more specifically for this particular piece of interview, a uh, member of the Easter Monkeys, one of Cleveland's old classic bands. An album that's been long awaited is finally out in the finally, stores. after 10 years. Why don't you tell us about it? Well, it's an LP recorded in 1980. And you remember the Easter Monkeys? Chris oh, Yarbach, yes. Charlie Ditto, Linda Hudson, and myself ripping up the pop shop and various other clubs in the city. <laughs> and, uh, recorded an album and then ran out of money. So it sat in the can for 10 years. Recently we found some backing and uh, took the tapes into the studio, remixed it on very high-tech 1990s type equipment, outdoor equipment. Didn't lose any of the rawness, it doesn't sound like a New Age CD, <laughs> so don't worry about it. But uh, it's very clean and raw at the same time, and raw cheap. It's finally out in the stores. Great. Um, did you guys put it out yourself? or? Yeah, yeah. Charlie and I, and the great people at Hit and Run Records. Okay, so that means it's going to have some national distribution. Right, yes. Great. Um, International. Oh, it's obviously <laughs> even better. Does uh, does the Ubu thing have anything to do with that backing arising? I mean, was there any like interplay there, any kind of? Uh, no, not really. The two separate things. Yeah, that's great. Um, is there going to be any chance of an Easter Monkeys reunion to like celebrate the release of this? There is talk. There has been talk there for a long time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> when I get done with this Ubu tour, which is going to last about four weeks, uh, we're thinking of getting together in August, rehearsing once or twice, Just maybe playing here at the Babylon. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Wow, that's looking forward to playing those old songs. Again. Oh yeah, I mean, well, God, it's been what 10, 10 years, yeah. eleven years since you played them. It should be a a lot really of interesting, and 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 certainly a show that's going to draw people out of the woodwork. I hope so. Out, because I I recall the popularity that the Easter Monkeys had was the devoted, the demented, <laughs> and the few. <laughs> Actually, there were a that. lot of few. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, that's that's that is that's that's really that's really great, and. Um, you know, we're really glad to hear that that's, that that's finally out and about and things um, in your record stores. Um, the Home and Garden, has, uh, ha are you still involved with that project at all? Oh boy, not really. Uh, I don't even know if Home and Garden exists anymore. It's uh, Scott Cross's baby. Uh, he's been sort of tied up with Uber too, so I don't know if mm. he's continuing with them or not. Yeah, because I know you guys have been in the studio a lot with Ubu and yeah, doing a lot of, yeah, a lot of quite mixing a bit, and stuff like that. Quite a bit. Um, uh, yeah, Michelle's very busy with the Vivians. And many projects We're also besides. Really busy. Yeah, <laughs> right. The new Vivians album is out now, too, on Hit and Run. Plugged for that. Oh, same, same label? Yeah. Oh, great. I produced it. Oh! <laughs> Everybody buy it. Okay. It's really a great band. The, uh, they picked up the legacy of all the uh, true spirit of the Cleveland Underground. Yeah, the, 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 the now defunct the bands. Now defunct that, bands. That, yeah. Like the Sirens reunion <laughs> last week. It's like, oh, wow. I missed that. It was really awesome. Yeah, I, I missed that one too. Yeah. Um, in fact, I missed it. I mean, that was what, Friday, wasn't it, I think? Yeah. Yeah, that was, was Friday. Friday and yeah. We had the Woods Rock thing going on. And, oh, that's um, right. I didn't make it down to that on Friday night because a friend of mine called me with information that her grandfather was in the hospital and might not make it the weekend. So I put off going. Yeah. And stuff. But I, was, I wasn't able to go to that because that would have been great too. But I mean, you know, like this tradition of, of Cleveland bands um, and everything. I mean, you, yourself, I mean, you go way back with all those yeah. people. Way, way <laughs> <laughs> Um Yeah, as I have worn bodies and oh, yeah. mirrors. You were involved in mirrors, weren't you? Yeah. Were you were you involved in any kind of way um, around the same time as like Rocket Fun Tunes and all that stuff? Or? During that period, I was in Mirrors, the Electric Eels, or the Styrene Band, depending on what night it was. <laughs> and uh, 
it's funny because uh, Rocket from the Tombs and these three bands, bands that I mentioned were like rival bands. And we used to, you know, Rocket from the Tombs was, was an East Side band. Mirrors was the West Side band, even though I'm a dyed in the wool East Sider. I was the only <laughs> East Sider. And uh, so it was kind of a rivalry, uh, a good rivalry during, mm -hmm. during that time. Yeah. And. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Oh, hi, Jim. Hi. This isn't your room. I'm That's your room. That's my room. Oh, Jim. That's a lobby. The camera's oh, running. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> We're going to use all this footage. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? So anyway, the, the Yes, I knew bands. them. I knew them. Yeah, I knew, I knew David and Peter. And, uh, that whole crew for a long time we used to play at the a place called the Viking Saloon. I remember its have, name yeah. well. <laughs> there was there was a thing called the Extermination Night, and I think there were three of them in total. Where the Electric Beals would play Rocket from the Tombs. Oh God, knows what other bands were made at that time. I can't even remember now. But it was really a uh, clash of the wills to see who would who would be left in the club by the time the last man was over with. Uh, that's where Davey did his famous lawnmower solo. Well, I'm not familiar with that. Oh. Was, was was some doing, of his other stuff, but... <laughs> yeah. And the Electric Eels were doing a set. And, uh, Davey came out and did a lawnmower solo. And chopped up PA cables and that was the end of the night. <laughs> well, that's about extermination as far as you can take it, yeah. The night, the next night, the club burned down. What's history? I think we closed the door too. We used to I think we played the pop shop the night before. I think Lou Reed closed the door because I think Upstairs. he played the night it burned. Oh, okay. Because he did a coffee break concert that day it was a Wednesday, <laughs> and I think that was the night that it burned down. And I mean, how much more fitting can you yeah, get? Yeah. <laughs> Blue Reed Velvet Underground and down comes the Agora, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, but, <laughs> um, do you miss those days? I mean, things were so exciting then, you know, and they're not now, comparatively. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a bit older now, and I don't know if I would... But taking in perspective, you know, just the attitudes of the people then compared to the attitudes of the people today, oh, the difference. belief in the music then as compared to the belief in the money today. <laughs> Well put. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, I, basically that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a, a grave need for it in the town here. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen Cleveland go through cycles, basically, mm -hmm. where there are scenes and there aren't scenes for mm -hmm. a few years and there is and there isn't. Right now we're, I think, coming out of a dry period that's been going on for maybe seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ever since the early 80s. Yeah, it really yeah, it's about, about what it happened. And it's your fault when the Easter monkeys broke up. No, <laughs> you sold your record store, yeah. <laughs> and all the coolness left town. <laughs> it's not true. No, it's not true. But most of it left town right around that time. 82, 83 is really about the time that everything kind of just fell apart. And yeah. Stuff and, and attitudes really hit the skids and everybody broke up into these little cliques and if you weren't like part of this one and stuff, you know. You wouldn't like, know what this one was doing. Yeah. And, and it does. It seems to be kind of coming back together again yeah, now. Does. And, you know, like I go around to these different shows and stuff and I see a lot of crossover with people, yeah. which is a really good thing to see. And, of course, you know, like the majority of the people that watch the show are younger kids and stuff who are just coming on to the thing and just finding out about people like Peru who you know nothing about the Easter Monkeys or any of the yeah. classic Cleveland bands that really is a, just a, a, a remarkable period in Cleveland history, yeah, really musical nice. history. Um, and so hopefully it will be again. And yes, it will be really continue. Nice. Speaking, speaking of such things and talking about Rocket from the Tombs, um, it, it's kind of dawned on me the coincidence of sorts that uh, 
next week is the anniversary, the first anniversary of Stiv's death. Stiv. And with Garubu playing here tonight, and these people, and the connection between Ubu and Stiv, and a lot of old faces here tonight. Peter Lochner and um, David co writing the songs that the Dead Boys went on to make popular, and things like that. And it's the, the coincidence. It's kind of, kind of, kind of scary almost that it should happen at just this time. Yeah, it's coincidental. Synchronicity. It, yeah, I mean, it's it's part of part of that coming around full circle kind yeah. of thing again. Because attitudes of people really do kind of seem to be like gravitating back in that direction, and, and I like that. There's a need for it. There really is. There really is. Because I remember first coming onto the scene and, and, and finding out about all this stuff and everything in like '78, and um, the way everybody got along so well together. You know, and it was like, no matter where you went on any given night, there was always a crowd of people that were all people your people. You knew, right? And no matter where you went, yeah, sure. and and so many clubs that were available to me, which is very right. Right. Um, I think the revital revitalization, excuse me, of Cleveland had a lot to do with that. Uh -huh. You know, tearing down a lot of well, these places were pits. Let's face it. You know. Yes. 
So anyway, thanks a lot. Thank you, John. Glad to talk to you about Thank this. You. And Pleasure. Very glad to hear that that's out. I really am. And, and we'll all be looking for it and stuff like that. And definitely waiting for August to see that, that release. Right. And um, this will be on the air by then. So hopefully you know, people will have seen it soon and check these guys out. And right. See if Good. this hype is. <laughs> If it's worth it, it'll be worth it. Yeah. It'll be worth that 250 admission. <laughs> <laughs> We're thinking of doing it for an old price. Oh, wow. That would really be great, man. People know. <laughs> Make, recreate the seven. Time caps. <laughs> Oh, no, you're in trouble. <laughs> Two gems. <laughs>